I'm going to show you how to create this really cool looking loop grid on an Elemental WordPress website. We currently have six posts and you could do this with products as well. We got some alternating colors and we have this lovely bento style grid, which is really easy to do with a bit of CSS code. But I'm going to show you how to build this with the colors and the way it looks really simple and easily. Stay tuned. First thing to understand is that this is six posts at the moment and we can expand on it. We have post one, two, three, four, five, six. Let me now show you what this would look like as a standard loop grid before we start to add in all the bits and pieces. So here we go with the standard loop grid on an elemental page. It's just four columns and we're showing just six posts at the moment. I can show more if I want, but I want to focus on the six for a reason and then we'll expand on that. And we have for the template just a background image, cover image, you know, just a container background featured image. We have the post title, which is just post 12, 11, 10. I know, really exciting. And we have the category, which is just post terms. Nothing fantastical going on here, right? This is kind of pretty easy and quick to build. Let's now go through the stages. The first thing we're going to do is add in a background overlay color. Then we will modify the way it looks. So how did we do the background overlay color? If we go over to the WordPress website, I've got a custom field called hex, and I have covered this in a previous video. I'm just going to remind you though, this is just a normal select field. In the other video, I did it as a text. This is a select. The reason I've gone for select is because I've then defined the three colors you're allowed to pick. I've got red, orange, blue. I've put the values there and then I've put space, colon, space. You've got to put the space, colon, space. And then I've put a value here, red, orange, blue. Why have I done that? Well, you'll see in a moment when we get to the post. And I've also popped in a default value as well. So this is just a select field called hex one. Make sure you hit save changes. If I now go into any one of my posts and I have got 12 at the moment, when you scroll down to where we have the hex one field, can you see I now pick red, orange or blue? So this makes it easier because if you just put the hex code in the select, someone coming to it might go, well, what color is that? Is that yellow, green? What is it? This makes it easy for them to select. And the idea is you just select your color and you hit update. So every single one of my posts has got a color assigned to it. Now let's go back over to the loop grid here. We're going to hit edit template. Let's click on the container. Remember, it's got a post title and post terms. We click on the container. It's currently pulling through the featured image and it's a cover. We then go down to background overlay. And over here, rather than picking a color, I'm going to hit the dynamic tag and I'm going to go to post custom field. And if you hit the, um, uh, the, the drop down there, I should see hex one. If, however, hex one did not appear, sometimes the select doesn't always show it. Just go and type in hex one. Why am I using the word hex one? Because if you go back over to my field group over here, the field name is hex one, not the actual label title. It's the name that's generated here. And that's all I need to do. Now you are going to look at that and go, well, everything's gone red. That is what it will probably do by default. It will bring through the latest color. But when I hit save and back, you are now going to see the different colors come. So for my posts, I've gone in and I've gone and assigned them colors. And I've been a bit manipulative. I've gone with red, yellow, and then I've gone with blue, and then I've gone with red again over here. Because I know that when the layout shows, the way the layout is uh, presented, I wanted a particular look and feel. And it's really easy for you to modify the color. So that was really quick and simple. How do I add in a hex overlay color, which is specific to, well, not specific, it's dynamic per post. Now let's go and sort out the styling. I've already mentioned that this is currently got six items. The reason being is my layout works in a grid of six. So let me explain that a little bit better. When you've got your grid of six, you'll have one, two, and then you'll have a big one here. Then you have another big one here, and this is now post four, or the order how it works, and then you've got five and six down there. So when you get to the seventh post, it will now start up here. So you'll have seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. So let's go and sort that out. What you do is you click on your loop grid, okay? Make sure you're clicked on that. Go to the advanced tab and go down to where we have custom CSS. And I'm gonna drop in a bit of code and then explain it. And before you say that that doesn't look right, there is something extra you need to do, but I'm gonna show you that right at the end or once we've covered off this code. Let's just understand the code for a moment. Over here, it says selector e loop item. Now, if you wanna give your grid a particular class name, do that, and then you would get rid of selector and put your class name. But right now, this is saying e loop item 
grid column span one. Okay, remember our loop grid is four columns wide. One, two, three, four. You can see here, one, two, three, four. So by default, if I have not said you're gonna be a different size, you will only be one grid item, which is why post 12, 11, eight, and seven are currently just one grid item because it's four columns. If this was made to be five columns like that, can you now see one, two, three, four, if you imagine there was one here and five. If we were to go to three, one, two, three, I don't think I can make that any clearer. Now let's look at post 10 and nine. Now they are spanning two columns, but I also want them to be two rows as well. So over here, I've got grid columns span two and span two. Right, I've got it for both of those items. Now, they're not showing correctly, and I'll sh explain why in a moment. So how do I know which one I'm going to touch? Over here, it says 6n minus 2. Because my grid or the logic works in a grid of 6, okay? So if I was going to now go, I want this to be a logic of a grid of 4 or a grid of 8. So let's say now I was going to have a certain pattern for my first date. And then after that, I want the pattern to repeat. What you would then do is have 8n. If it was always going to be in a pattern of three, so you might have uh, two small ones and then a, a, a wider one. And then every time I want that to repeat, I might work in a grid of three. So it might be three N. Um, I have got earlier videos the day before or two days before that you might want to go and watch that really do clarify this a whole lot better than probably what I'm saying right now. But because I want my pattern to repeat every sixth not six, like it's the seventh item because you get six and then the seventh one will click in, which will go seven to 12. And then the 13th, right? Always think about uh, mathematics six, okay? I'm saying six N. Now N is equal to one, right? So six N means six times one, six. So six is the maximum value, minus two. Six minus two is four. So when you think about the, the number of items that we can currently see, item one, item two, item three, item four, item five, item six. By doing six minus two equals four, I'm now touching the fourth item over here. Span two for the column and the row. I've also got six N minus three. N is equal to one. Six times one is six minus three equals three. So one, two, three. If I wanted to also touch the, um, the fifth item, I would do 6n minus 1. 6 times 1 is 6, minus 1 is 5. So that's the fifth item. Let's just go and do it. Let's just copy this code. And I'm now going to say 6n minus 1. And look at that, post 8, everything is very uneven, okay? This will sort itself out. I'll show you how. But post 8 is the fifth item here because it starts from the beginning and it works that way. If this was in ascending order rather than descending, the same logic would still apply. One, two, three, four, five, six. If, however, I wanted to touch the second item, I would go 6n minus 4. So 6 minus 4 equals 2. Look, the second item, and if I was to go with, say, minus 5, it touches the first item. And if I just go with 6n, 6n is just 6, so it touches the sixth item. Okay, I hope this is really, really sinking in. So let's just go back to the logic that we currently got. And it's working, right? It's working pretty well, except the heights are messed up. And you might go into your template and start going, oh, I've got to set a minimum height. Oh, no, hold on. I don't want to do a minimum height for all of them. I only want to do it for post 10, post 9, and oh, it gets messy. Here's what you need to do, all right? You go back over to your content, and can you see it says equal height? Click equal height. It is now equalizing everything for you, okay? And that's all you have to do. Um, I would recommend, though, that this code that we've currently got in here, I would only do it for, say, the desktop. When you get to, say, the tablet or even the mobile, you might not want to go for this style. Now you just want to go for a stacked style. So look, if you maintain this style on the mobile, it's going to look odd, okay? And I would go and have an at media code in here. So I would say at media minimum uh, width is, I don't know, 768. So you've got to be 768 and above for this particular style to apply. Otherwise, it just leaves it as standard with, you know, stacking with uh, one post above one another. But there's the code. I'll stick it in the video description. Bit of background overlay, you know, just to add a bit of variation. And, what, and here's what's really cool, by the way, okay, I, I forgot to show you. 
This is currently showing you six items. I'm instead going to show you 12. So there we go, we got 12. There's our grid of six. And when we now move to the seventh post, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, right? The, the grid of six starts again. So can you now see the pattern? And we go all the way down to post one, right? And if I was to go and add in another post, let's call it post 13. Let's give it a featured image. And I'm now going to set the color to be blue. I refresh my page and look, the colors have now changed. You've got to think a little bit about the colors or what you're going to be working with. But you get this really cool variation kicking on with different color schemes coming in. Post 13 is there. That now becomes post number one. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then they start to continue on. Now, at the moment, we're missing post one. I do want to show this to you. If we go and set that to be 13, there is post one because that is now part of the next grid of six. And you could do this for products. You've got to think, use your imagination, a bit of lateral thinking here. This is not just posts. You could do this for products as well. Hey, I'm Imran Web Squad, and I hope you like, subscribe, share, and follow. I'll see you soon.